Hello everyone, welcome back to the Anatomy Lab. Today we are going to be taking a look at the pelvic floor, which is largely going to be made up of two groups of muscles, the perineal muscles, which are relative to the perineum, as well as the levator ani muscles. So to get started, like if you look closely, the pelvic floor is basically this entire kind of wide membrane formed by a, like those variety of muscles. But basically this is going to help with kind of keeping everything inside of the pelvis, compressing the pelvis, as well as compressing some of these openings or tubes rather, that are going to be going through here as well. Now, before we take a look at the pelvic floor, let's take a look at some orienting structures, which should help us to kind of figure out what is what. The first of which is right over here. This is the pubis at the front of the pelvis or the front of the coxal bone. Over here on the side, this is going to be the ischial bone or the ischium. And then in the back, you can see that there's a triangular shaped bone. This is going to be the sacrum. You can see it a lot more clearly from this side as well. But at the bottom of the sacrum, you're going to have this chain of small bones called the coccyx. Now, while we're at it, there's also a few openings that we can see here. And just to be clear, this is a female pelvis. So there's going to be one more opening than what you find in the male body. But if you look closely, there's a small opening here, urethral opening, a secondary opening right behind it called the vaginal opening. And then at the very back over here, this is where you'll find the bottom of the rectum. But in the middle, you have the anal canal, which once again, you can see from the outside as well urethral opening, vaginal opening, and then anal canal surrounded by the external anal sphincter. Now, with that in mind, let's go ahead and take a look at the muscles that we have here. The first of which is going to be connected to the pubis, but then it's also going to go down and back around the rectum. So this muscle is called the puborectalis. So luckily, it's all in its name, pubo rectalis. And then similarly, you have another muscle with its structures in its name, pubis, once again, but in this case to the tailbone, the coccyx, pubo coccygeus. So notice that it's going farther than pubo rectalis. This is pubo coccygeus. And then another muscle over here that's further lateral, connecting to this other muscle, actually. This is called the internal or sorry, the obturator internus. So connecting to the obturator internus, this is called the iliococcygeus. And then lastly, we have one more muscle right over here. This muscle is actually connecting from the ischium to the coccyx. So this is called the ischiococcygeus. But just to be clear, this is also going to be called the coccygeus itself. So either one is fine. Now, I would like you to point or point out that there's a hole here, which typically would have a muscle in it. And you can actually see that muscle over here on the other side, but it's still kind of covered by nerves. So if you follow it to the lateral side of the pelvis, you'll be able to see it a lot more clearly. That was the piriformis. So in the back of the pelvis, this is the piriformis, and you can see that right here. And furthermore, here's your obturator foramen, and then on the other side of your obturator foramen, this is your obturator internus. Now, a couple of nerves that I would like to point out is that if you look closely, like you had the sciatic nerve being formed by largely the sacral plexus going through here and then coming out underneath the piriformis. But there's also one more small nerve here, which is visible here as well. This is called the pedundal nerve. So the pedundal nerve is going to be directly like next to it and inferior to this to the sciatic nerve, but this nerve will be going down towards your your levator ani muscles. Now, those are going to be the muscles that you can see here, like along the internal pelvic region, but along the external pelvic region, we can also see a couple more muscles here which is relative to a new region called the perineum. So the perineum is going to be generally called this region between the, between the anus and the vulva, or the anus and the testes, or rather scrotum. But there's also some other muscles that will be relative to that as well. 
So really quickly, this is the perineum, but if you look closely, you also have this connective tissue in here called the perineal body. Now connecting to this region though, you have some muscles to look for here as well. And if you look closely, you can see that these muscles are gonna be, in this case, going transversely. This is going to be called the superficial transverse perineal muscle. So this kind of like thin one is the superficial transverse perineal muscle. And if you have a superficial, guess what you also have? A deep. So this one that's a lot kind of larger and broader, but also deeper, this is the deep transverse perineal muscle. So once again, the names are very indicative of what, like where you find it and what you find it connected to. But furthermore, if you look closely, there's a few more reproductive structures that I'd like to point out. So we already took a look at the urethral opening, the vaginal opening, and the anal canal. But up here, this is where you'd find the labia minora kind of joining together at the very front of the vulva. This is called the clitoris. So the clitoris is a relatively like, simple structure. This is going to be at the very front of the vulva. But then there's also a structure that is along the side and deeper along the along the side of the vulva. This is called the bulb of the vestibule of the vestibule, and this is called the vestibular gland. These structures will help with lubricating the vulva or rather the vestibule, like everything inside of here. So these structures can secrete a fluid to help with lubricating that. But relative to these structures, you have a few more things to look for. The first of which you can see here is actually kind of cut off. But you can see the whole muscle leading all the way back here and covering these structures. This is called the bulbospongiosis. So bulbospongiosis. But then you also have another muscle that is coming from the clitoris going along the side to connect to the ischium. So this is called the ischio cavernosis. And ischio should be pretty clear, but cavernosis is referring to the cavernosum tissue, which is going to be found inside of the clitoris. So just to be clear, you have the corpora cavernosa, which are also going to be found in the penis, and both of which are going to help with allowing for the, like, the respective structures, the clitoris or the penis, to become erect. So the corpora cavernosa are erectile tissues, and that's why you have the ischio cavernosa, which will be attached to it to help with maintaining that erect erection for either structure. Now, with that said, I think that should be about it for today. Um, make sure that you take a look at these structures carefully. Look at them and where they're attached, the, for the fiber orientations, either what they're covering or what they are relative to, at least. And I think they should be relatively straightforward. So I think that's it. Good luck with your studying. Thank you for listening. And I'll see you all next time.